Hello, my name is Larry, and welcome to the latest chapter uh, on the Old Gazer channel, which is a channel where we try to provide some practical advice, suggestions, recommendations, and maybe try to provide a little uh, inspiration for those who are beginning amateur astronomers or inexperienced amateur astronomers trying to work your way into this hobby and move forward with it. So that's what we're all about. Uh, welcome. If you if this is your first video, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. And I would like to thank everyone who has watched the previous videos and uh, who have provided some, some good feedback. I appreciate that very much. And I'm uh, glad to have you back again. Uh, I don't know if you've uh, watched any of the videos before, or if you have, if you've watched them in any particular order, but the last three videos I've done were all about telescopes. You know, I call those videos Telescopes 101, Parts 1, 2, and 3. And uh, today I want to change things up a little bit and go in a little bit uh, a different direction and uh, just share something uh, uh, a lot of, uh, of a different vein with you, if you will. Uh, I was out one night this week uh, viewing and taking pictures of the October full moon. And it was a beautiful night and the, the moon was just gorgeous. Just a great night to be out there. And as always, when I'm viewing the moon, my mind takes me back to something that happened a long, long time ago, which I've always regarded as that time when I realized that I wanted to be an amateur astronomer. Now, I suspect that all amateur astronomers can point to a time or a place, an event, circumstance, whatever, that uh, uh, marks the point at which you embarked uh, on this hobby or made the decision that maybe you wanted to become an amateur astronomer. Maybe you came to a point uh, where you realized that in some way, shape, form, or fashion, uh, viewing and taking pictures of objects in the night sky and learning about them was somehow going to be a part of your life. In other words, you determined that you were going to be an amateur astronomer. Well, as I said, that time for me took place a long, long time ago. Now, some of you may think that if this was in the prehistoric times or maybe even the Jurassic era, <laughs> but uh, at least it was in the 1950s and 1960s. Uh, when I was a boy uh, and, a, and a young teenager, I think I've alluded before in a previous video that I grew up in that era, the 50s and 60s, where the exploration of space uh, using means other than just looking through telescopes was in its infancy. I think I was uh, eight years old when the first unmanned satellite, Sputnik, was sent into orbit. Uh, I was uh, 11 years old, I believe, during the time of the very first manned space flights. And I was still a teenager uh, when uh, uh, we got around to the first man landing on the moon in 1969. I've always felt very privileged uh, to have grown up as a child and a teenager during that, during that era. Uh, I was obsessed with anything that had to do with space flight, space, space exploration, the moon, the planets, the stars, Anything that had to do with the cosmos and especially with space exploration uh, had just pretty much taken me over. <laughs> I'm not sure obsessed is a strong enough word for it, but at any rate, uh, I was really into it. And then when I was 12 years old, my stepfather uh, gave me some sort of extra chores, extra work to do uh, for a little spending money and over a period of time, I saved all that money until I finally had enough to buy myself a small refracting telescope. Now, I don't remember the brand name of that telescope. I certainly don't remember what the size of the objective lens was. Uh, I do remember that it was a gray metal tube with a wooden tripod and it had a couple of eyepieces. And sadly, that telescope has uh, gotten away from me somewhere over the years. You know, I've mo moved numerous times and, uh, uh, and I just do not remember of when the telescope got away from me, but I don't have it anymore. For sentimental reasons, uh, I certainly wish that I did, but I just don't have it anymore. There is, however, one thing that I do remember uh, very vividly, almost as if it were yesterday, and that was my first view of the night sky through that cheap little refracting telescope. Uh, the object that I first saw was, of course, the moon, and I'm presuming that 
the first time people, uh, most people look through a telescope, it's usually uh, to look at the moon. It's just a convenient, easy first thing to look through. And that was the case with me. I'll never forget looking through that eyepiece and turning that focus knob and the moon suddenly came into focus and I was absolutely awestruck. There's just, I don't know a better word for it. I could see the craters on the moon right there before my very eyes through my own telescope. I could see the light and dark areas, the contrast between those. Uh, you know, I could see, see the, I could just see it all right there in front of me. From the moon to my eyes, I was seeing uh, an image of the magnified moon. And there's no, really no words to express how that excited me and thrilled me and inspired me. And that was the moment when I knew, uh, without, uh, of course, at the time realizing the, the extent to which it was going to happen or exactly how it was going to happen, that was the moment that I knew that viewing the night sky through a telescope was going to be a significant part of my life and something that would bring me great joy, great excitement, great satisfaction, uh, great inspiration. And so it has been that way. Uh, I spent many nights with that little telescope, including some bitterly cold nights, which I remember uh, vaguely, uh, out uh, looking at the moon. Now, I tried to look at some other things, and I, I, I think I can vaguely remember that I was able to see some little pinpoints of light that might have been some of Jupiter's moons. I might have seen a little bulge in the disk of Saturn that would represent its rings, but the thing that I, the only thing that I could really see with any de uh, degree of uh, of uh, clarity or decency at all was the moon. But boy, that was enough for me for a while. Uh, I made pictures, uh, pardon me, I drew pictures, sketches of what I was seeing. I kept a journal as to what I could see during various phases of the moon when the Terminator was changing its position night by night. Uh, it was amazing. I don't know how many hours I must have spent just viewing the moon and studying it and recording the things that I saw. I even took some extremely rudimentary pictures of the moon way back in the early 1960s. Uh, of course, I'm not sure that anyone but me would even recognize those today if I still had them, which unfortunately I don't. But I'm not sure anyone but me would recognize them as pictures of the moon. You could sort of see a bright you know, disc uh, against a, a dark background and maybe some hint of variations between light and dark areas on the moon. But that was about it. I took them using a Brownie Hawkeye camera, which I realize is something that none of you have ever even heard of before. It was just a little box camera that took pictures on uh, two and a quarter by two and a quarter inch uh, negative film. I learned how to develop that film in a developing tank using chemicals. And I also had a little thing called a print box, which is something else none of you have ever heard of before. So this is a like a, a, a lesson in ancient history here. But a print box was just a little box with a light inside, and you could make contact prints. You could put a negative and a piece of photographic paper on there and transfer the negative image into a positive image on that photographic paper. So I had my bedroom was soon full to the brim with little two and a half, two and a quarter by two and a quarter inch photographs of literally everything in my house, my community, my world, and even a few photographs of the moon itself. So uh, tremendous experience, uh, you know, uh, so exciting, something that I'll never forget. So uh, I observed and even photographed the moon countless hours during that time. Now, since then, of course, I've seen many astoundingly spectacular objects in the night sky. You know, I've seen the planets, I've seen nebulae, I've seen galaxies, I've seen star clusters of double stars. Uh, and they've been mesmerizing and wonderful, exciting, inspiring. Uh, but I find myself continually coming back to the moon. And I'm sure it's because of the initial impact that those early views through that telescope of the moon uh, it created within me and remain with me to this day. Uh, and every time I look at the moon, uh, even today, after all of these years, I get that same feeling of excitement and inspiration. Uh, it's something that will just always be special to me. And that's the, exactly the way it felt, I felt earlier this week when I was out looking at the October full moon. Uh, so that's kind of what started it all for me. 
Uh, I'm sure most of you could share an experience like that as well. And if you'd like to do this so in the comments for this video, please feel free to share those and we'll, uh, I'd like to, to hear about those and see those. But uh, uh, it's very, very important, I believe, to hold on to those first exciting, inspirational moments when we had that epiphany, if you will, that revelation, that whatever you want to call it, that uh, represented the point at which we knew or, or decided that we were going to become amateur astronomers. I'll tell you from experience, and you need to know this if you're a beginner or an inexperienced amateur astronomer, there will be times that you're going to be frustrated. There are going to be times that you might get weary and tired and maybe a little burn out. Uh, there will be times when the uh, demands of life, you know, the pressures of life, the things of the world will intrude and not let us pursue this hobby to the extent that we perhaps would like to do so. There will be there, those moments in your uh, uh, careers as an amateur astronomer. And I think it's important that we have something that we can keep in mind, uh, some inspirational something that we can always look to to kind of get us through those times and to remind us of how this hobby can really be in its finest moments. And I would, I would suggest that one of those things that we need to always reflect on is that first moment when we had that, when the light bulb came on and we knew that we wanted to be an amateur astronomer. And uh, so that's, uh, I think that's very important uh, to do that. Now, uh, for me, of course, it was that first look at the magnified moon. Uh, I think it was Buzz Aldrin, one of the Apollo 11 astronauts, you know, one of the first two to walk on the moon. Some, at some point during that Apollo 11 mission, he referred to the moon as a place of uh, magnificent desolation. And I think that's a good way to put it. It certainly is a desolate place. It's devoid of life and devoid of a lot of color, and it's just rocks and dust uh, and so forth. But to me, and I think to many of you who have gotten into astronomy, it is indeed magnificent desolation. It might be desolate, but it's spectacular and it's beautiful and it is endlessly fascinating. And so it has always been uh, for me. So uh, just wanted to share that with you. Always keep in your mind uh, a memory of those times when uh, uh, things have been really good for you as an amateur astronomy. Those moments when you were especially excited, especially inspired, especially motivated, and use those to help you move forward when you get frustrated or tired or weary or a little burned out or when other things intrude and prevent you from pursuing the hobby to the extent that you would like to. Just remember those times and realize that those times will come again because one thing about amateur astronomy is the next spectacular moment is always just around the corner. Of that, you can always be sure. So uh, just wanted to share that with you in hopes of perhaps providing a little inspiration or motivation, feeble though it may have been. And I'd just like to conclude then by uh, uh, showing you a sort of a, a pictorial tribute to the thing that started me off on this great journey. A few photographs that I've taken of the moon, not great photographs. As you may know from my previous videos, I make no claims to being a, a serious uh, astrophotographer. I take very unsophisticated, uh, simple pictures of things in the night sky. So these won't be things of art, but just a few different aspects of the moon, uh, not very many, won't take very long, uh, just as a sort of tribute uh, to that time in my life that always remains my main point, my focus of inspiration, which was, of course, my first view of the magnified moon through that small telescope low these many years ago. Uh, and so uh, that said, uh, let me just show you my own little modest tribute, pic, uh, photographic tribute uh, to our nearest neighbor, uh, that object of magnificent desolation, the moon.